All right, guys, it's Anthony, GM85, for text talking. So this month's topic is torque wrenches. So we're gonna go through the shop torque wrenches and my personal torque wrenches, which mine is only three torque wrenches I need for my job. So first ones we have are shop supplied, half inch, three eighths. Uh, the design I've never liked on these. Uh, so you unlock here and then you spin here and then you lock. I've never liked that design. Um, and they got a little angle thing on the front of them. This is not a very expensive torque wrench. I don't know even the accuracy on them, but since these are shop supply torque wrenches, both of them, uh, we have four of these actually, two and two, but is right here. Since it's a 24 seven facility, this gets used by more than just one shift and this is not stored correctly at all. It's at, I think it's at 59 Newton meters right now, and this isn't even tightened. So I wouldn't trust this torque wrench because it's been used and abused for four years. I wouldn't trust this. I don't know the accuracy on them. The only good thing about this one is it's dual skill. So you got your foot pounds and you got your Newton meters. So that's a big plus for those, but I wouldn't trust them. The other two we have, same thing, three eighths and half inch are these CDIs. So half inch, three eighths, a little push button quick release, which is nice. I do not honestly know if these do angle. I don't believe they do. But you got your up down scale, your up and down scale, your units, so you can go inch pounds, newton meters, and foot pounds on these. Um, I honestly don't like the flex head on these personally. Um, it's definitely useful for automotive applications, but what we're using our stuff for is non-automotive applications. It's more of a straight shot. But we keep these in their cases with all their paperwork. And these ones are rated at 2%, which is the big difference when you're talking about torque wrenches. The percent range, snap-ons around the 2% two, 2 range. Like this is a snap-on product, uh, and then some uh, lower brands, you'll see somewhere 4%, 5%, even 6%. We're talking about torque on critical fasteners, aluminum heads, you wanna spend money on a quality tool. These, so those get stored with their little, even the little packet guy. The little thing I don't know where it's at the little silica guy uh, so we use those uh, the 3h one gets the most use out of those we use it for breakaway torque but I also have another way to do breakaway torque as well and we also got this big mammer jammer here this is a two-piece torque wrench this is a 1,000 Newton meter torque wrench it is dual scale in Newton meters and foot-pounds so it goes up to a thousand foot-pounds so you got that right there here's your little slide collar you lock up and you slide your pipe on now for this to work correctly you have to have this pipe on or it will not apply said torque on this big one inch guy using this thing requires sometimes two people because I think we've used this for 750 foot pounds of torque for some equipment application I do not recall what it was for but we actually bought this for two specific occasions and we've only used it four times since I've been at the job but this is a one inch anvil and a 750 foot pound guy. But you gotta have the leverage, that pipe makes this do its job. Um, another thing is keep your materials that come with your torque wrench, your certificate of calibration, your silica packs. Um, there's also some of them do come with timetables and application of torque and things of that nature or conversion charts so keep that stuff guys don't throw it away it's always useful this is the most used torque wrench in the shop and this is a quarter drive husky in newton meters and inch pounds dual scale and once again this is stored incorrectly this is stored at 75 inch pounds this little torque wrench is pretty nice but i don't use it that often if i have to i will but I, w I don't trust it because it's always stored incorrectly. And that's why I use my own tools. So my tools I use here, this is my 3 8 snap-on. So the only thing wrong with this one is I got this when I was 22. And it's been calibrated and checked over the years. And I think I've rebuilt the head on it before. But it's not dual scale. I didn't know that at the time. So it's just in foot-pounds, so that's why I have my conversional math charts. That's why I prefer dual scale stuff. So I didn't know that when I was 23. So if you're looking into it, you can buy strictly one that says foot pounds or you can buy dual scale. So mine is 
this my little quarter inch one I use is made by Right Tools. Little slider collar. You slide and you spin. And I got my inch pounds and I got my newton meters. I use this the most and this has held up. I don't even remember how much I got this for. It's a little quick type. Works really good. Now for breakaway torque guys, say those say the digital guy has a broken screen or a dead battery, we don't have batteries. We need to do breakaway. I have this 3 8 beam, and mine is indicated right here between 35 and 45 with two little specific hash marks so I can get my gauge. It would normally be between 35 and maybe 37. So once I'm in there, it's not as precise as the digital, but I can write down my breakaway and give a range to the client. So, And this thing does not need any calibration this thing will last forever you just go and this pivot it works both directions it is a slower way of doing things but this thing will last forever so if i need to do uh angle i don't have an angle torque wrench or digital torque wrench uh pull out something like this this is really old-fashioned um doesn't get tons and tons of use i don't need it but i do have it I just brought this to work recently just in case I do need it because we're getting really involved in some weird things lately But these things aren't cheap either It's a way to measure it and I do appreciate the physical gauge versus digital now. That's one thing you'll notice about me. I use More physical things. I don't trust digital tools as much as most people. I like things like this That's just me guys, but these are torque wrenches. I use here is this but I do recommend quality torque wrenches over cheap Chinese junk ones um, especially now the reasoning is uh, I'm seeing more and more plastic stuff like plastic pumps and uh, housing bolts and things like that so that's where you're gonna want to maybe look into even buying these torque screwdrivers now those are very expensive if you're looking at snap-on CDI precision instruments you can get the dial gauge ones or you can get a torque screwdriver one the problem is I looked into those they're plus or minus six percent from non-professional tool truck companies so that's out of the question for me especially if we're doing plastics plastic into plastic guys so that's just where i'm at i've always been a fan of the snap-on click style i have a split beam one somewhere i don't know where it is i think i lent it to someone and it never came back but i run click style and beam styles and i do run digital occasionally but this is anthony G85 for text talk and shop and uh, for torque wrenches guys don't cheap out on them spend the money on a quality one it could even be a craftsman one um, they're not bad I've had one of those before too but check us all out um, individually um, there's I think nine of us and follow us on Instagram at text underscore underscore talking shop I believe is what it is uh, but yeah, the G85 and I'll catch you guys all later